Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Distinct Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Welcome to Corn School. I'm Bernard Tobin. Hey, today uh, I've got a really interesting conversation for you. Uh, we're talking 60 inch corn. Um, and to share his insights, um, we're joined by Ed Hansen. He farms in Sunderland, Ontario, and he also works for Can Grow Crop Solutions. Ed, how's it going? Good morning, Bernard. I'm fine, thanks. How about you? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, now, this year you work with uh, growers, you know, from across Ontario, Quebec, and Nova Scotia to grow 60-inch corn. And uh, I guess the first question I have for you is, is why grow 60-inch corn? Where does it fit? Well, it's been an interesting journey. Probably started thinking about it two years ago, and it took a long time to gain some traction and find a few folks that were interested Originally, I think it was an opportunity to extend some rotations locally and not far away from here. There's corn and beans, that's it. That was part of the primary reason. We started to interplant on 30-inch rows, but we couldn't get adequate germination. So 60-inch rows started to make a bit more sense. So, you know, obviously you've got some uh, 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 rotation benefits. You've got livestock growers who obviously, you know, are looking for some fall grazing, a lot of other things that sort of, you know, makes that goes into that decision. Absolutely. So for cattle guys, it's easy ROI. They can figure that stuff out. But for cash crop guys, we had to come out with another uh, opportunity to extend the rotation and grow cover crops. And we continue to struggle with some of those numbers, actually. Mm. Hey, let's talk about corn for a second. We'll start there. Um, at 60-inch rows, uh, you got a population of roughly around 16,000. And I've got some interesting photos here of what, of what looks like what we'd call 30-inch twins on 60-inch centers. Um, a couple of different configurations there. Um, I'm assuming variety f- selection would be an important consideration. Absolutely. So in a short one-year span, we figured that out. It needs to be a flex variety. So talk if you're interested in trying some of this, talk to your seed reps to make sure that varieties are able to flex. And that means the ability to make yield at lower populations. Yeah, so they obviously uh, expand and even put on an extra ear. Um, what about weed control here? I mean, obviously with 60-inch rows, we got a lot of sunlight. We got a lot of bare ground. Uh, I, I imagine pre-emerge is pretty important here. Absolutely, and I have to say I've been afforded the opportunity to travel quite a bit because of the Kangaroo Crop Solutions Group and talk with folks like Dr. Lee Breeze or Dr. Abby Wick. And Dr. Lee Breeze, embedded in my brain, before you plant a cover crop, make sure you have great weed control. And that's kind of where it all starts. Once you figure out what your problem weeds are, choose a herbicide, then we can make a cover crop strategy around that. Yeah, so you want to know, obviously, what, what the troublemakers are in your area and, and pick a, uh, the, the right product to take them out, and then you've got options after that, right? Yep, so locally, foxtail is one of the challenging weeds. We go after it, and that means we have to be as selective with some of the grass cover crops that we choose. Mm. What about fertility now? Obviously, you're putting down corn 60 inches apart. How do you manage fertility? So fertility is also has proven to be a pretty important component of 60-inch row corn. Broadcast fertility doesn't really work that well because cover crops are great scavengers. So the challenge being, if cover crops have consumed all the fertility, the corn crop is going to be uh, compromised. Consequently, it seems as though we can confidently say that banning fertility beside the row is very, very important, even at lower populations. Uh, many fertility is where it's at. Mm. Hey, so let's talk about those cover crops. When do you plant and, and, and what species? So this is first year for us. There's some folks in the States that have been doing for several years. So we did a couple of staggered planting dates. Historically, when we're planting companion crops into corn, would be at B3, B4. And that's kind of what we did again this year. Uh, in lieu of broadcasting, no, we built a planter. Most of the folks in the group have a planter, so we have better seed-to-soil contact. Back to the conversation about locally, with foxtail being a problem, annual ryegrass is the base. And from that, we can build our cover crop strategy on top of annual ryegrass, radish, turnip, clovers, or some of the things that you might consider. Yeah. So, hey, 
everything's established, everything's going, you, we're rolling in through uh, harvest. Um, obviously, you got lots of light, so I would, I'm assuming you got some good-looking cover crops there. Um, how does uh, how is yield impacted on the corn? Ed, you mentioned, I think, before we got going, you know, you're going to get three cobs per ear a lot of the times, uh, You got, but your yield's going to be 12 to 15% below conventional. That doesn't sound too bad. So that's year one, and I think part of the reason why it's been so appealing in the Mindac area is because of yield potentials there. Three, four ton average, so 12% of that is a number that we can wrap our heads around. And the five ton average or more, it's a significant loss. So yeah, the first year trials would average in between 12, 13% yield reduction in 60 inch corn in comparison to conventional 30s. Yeah. Hey, so let's talk about economics and ROI. Obviously, you know, uh, yield is reduced, but hey, you're also cutting inputs. Um, you're adding a lot of grazing, fall grazing for livestock. Uh, you know, how does it work out for guys? Well, that's what's proven to be very interesting already in such a short term is that we've proven it be, to be viable. 12% yield reduction is significant. In the current marketplace, $5 corn, that's $60 have to take into consideration that at our farm the population was half as well so we're almost at a break-even situation for cattle guides that's a lot easier whether you're background in calves or you're bringing in dry cows i uh, i should have had some pictures for you to see but there's some cattle out grazing right now there's some of the growers that i work with that will graze into the new year that's just huge yeah. not having to feed these times of months plus the manure spread and there's all different ways to think about it it's fairly straightforward for the livestock sector. Yeah. Hey, final point, and uh, what's a really cool point you mentioned here, uh, you know, you work with farmers across North America in your group this year, you know, from North Dakota all the way to PEI during a pandemic. Um, again, a Twitter group um, really got you connected, a great exchange of ideas. Talk about, I guess, the importance of something like social media and being able to sort of do what you're doing here. Absolutely. I, I mean, the lion's share of the folks in that direct message Twitter chat I've never met before. Mm. I've just seen on Twitter that they have like-minded uh, visions or like-minded ideas, and it's without a doubt uh, an easier way to accelerate the whole process. Although climates might be different and uh, management might be different, you can quickly find something that is the same, and I think it accelerates the whole process. We've definitely narrowed in what we shouldn't do and what we should do uh, in a very short period of time. And you did it during the pandemic. <laughs> and we did it through the pandemic, and much like this interview, it's something that we're going to have to get used to. It's proven to be a great resource, and from that... Uh, we're able to gain even more traction and move forward. Mm. Well, Ed, hey, it's a great story. Uh, thanks for stopping by and sharing it with us. Uh, we'll catch up with you next year. How about that? And we'll have you back on the Corn School. I appreciate it, Bernard. Happy holidays. Same to you.